Mohammed, yeah, what did, just just start in, let's go back before you picked up a camera and the first time you decided and thought about photography. Thank you, Neil. Um, you're gonna take me I'm like gonna take you right back. So. 30, I would say 32 years ago. Yeah, Jordan? You know, I was, I'm a Jordanian national who was mm. born in Jerusalem. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, and uh, I remember growing up on the sounds of conflict. It wasn't easy as a kid, you know, mm. to, to be born there, to be raised there. However, something extraordinary happened in my life. So you were used to the sounds and the sights of conflict from a very young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I grew up with it. Yeah. There was feeling it. Listening. It's always uh, something that gives me that uh, ache gap. I don't know. It's a, uh, it's dark. I, my grandmother, I mean, she had a Polaroid, she had a camera. Yeah, yeah. And I was a kid, I didn't have much options to be a kid. I mean, safety was priority, school wasn't easy going and coming. However, I met this Polaroid, I met this camera, and I was amazed that there is a button, you press it, the paper comes out. Yeah, yeah. And I can see myself, I can see my family, I can see this memory. We used to go to sit by a small waterfall in the country. And these pictures we used to take with my family, my father, my mother, mm. and my three sisters, and my grandma. Right, so the whole family. It lives forever. So I fell in love with photography. Mm. So I found my toy, my game this magical box I used to call it. However, as I mentioned earlier, I was born in a conflict. So news was everything, man. Da, da, everything, da, da. everything. You wake up in the morning in the radio, this happened there, this happened there. In midday, you're having lunch, it's about the news. Before you sleep, it's about the news. So I, I, I have this background that news is everything. That's exhausting. Yeah. So how how is the reaction to you being a Jordanian family in Israel? There's I mean, smooth, no problem. No. Just... What I mean is, um, um, my roots are Palestinian. It's a conflict, has been forever. I dream someday this will be over. But I mean, we had our lives. I come from a highly educated family. Mm. My dad has PhD in psychology. My mom is a teacher. Mm. So we we were always raised to. Respect everybody. Knowledge is the key. Yeah. Grew up, learn, so become. You were born into education. Yes. Yeah. However, back then, photography is not a job. It's a hobby. So you have to find a job. Yeah. I enrolled in college. I studied journalism and political science. Mm. And so I, was that written journalism? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And psychology. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I've, I've, I've always been interested yeah. in people's emotions, in people's body language. I love to sit down, observe, look at people, and I always search for smiles mm. up to date. I don't know, maybe it's something I From missed when I was in college. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm passionate about photography. Mm. I studied journalism. I'm in a country full of news yeah, yeah so i started picking my camera and documenting what's happening around me protests there funeral there clashes there yeah i found so myself you didn't have to go far to find the story right yeah. i found myself in the middle of the chaos with a camera exactly the opposite of what i wanted to do when i was a kid i just wanted to take pictures of trees Right. Nature, and colors, things, yeah. hope. Um, but didn't, did you say when you were in college you were very influenced by a picture by Saddam? I actually, while I was studying journalism, we had uh, a selective class, you know, about photography. Basic okay, photography. So, yeah. And this is where I saw this picture by a guy called Don McCullough. Mm. Man, this picture moved me, you know, as I mentioned to you, I love observing people. But when I looked at this picture, I felt this picture is moving. Mm. I felt something. I looked at the subjects of dawn and I had that shiver. I had that feeling, wow, maybe one day I get to be telling the world what's happening. Right. 
that was something one image yes of course a picture speaks volumes yeah. Yeah. and it's a universal language i wanted the pictures that i take to reach the maximum amount of people so i started to focus on issues that matter i mean i'm in a war zone but i always ask myself what's this picture gonna do to the people so i started to focus on the people instead of the destruction and the misery mm -hmm. on the daily life of people mm -hmm. and hoping this picture can spread the awareness can change stereotype you know mm -hmm. and can raise their voice and this is where we gonna come after how through these years there was a point where i created a foundation just simply to help mm -hmm. the people cope in the middle of the conflict so this so your friend who was killed in afghanistan yeah Anya Nidring house, yes she was a good friend of mine. She's yeah. a photographer. Anya was uh, part of the team yeah. that we were awarded the Pulitzers with. I met her in Baghdad in 2003. And you'd been working together until... I've been friends since... Yeah. In 2014, I was in... Uh, in March 2014, I was in Islamabad. Anya called me and said, my friend, I'm in Kabul, come and join me. Let's work together. That year was a very difficult year in the mm. history of Afghanistan. Mm. It was uh, the national election. The threats were very high. Mm. And we knew what's waiting us. I mean, but I never imagined I would lose my best friend there. Yeah. The 4th of April 2014, Anya was shot and killed in Khost in Afghanistan. Yeah. And I, I, I emailed her that morning and she said, I'm happy. To go and this is what i meant to do and up to date i believe but she, but do you feel that was a catalyst for you changing from focusing on the war to focusing on the people or was it this moment or did it come before that moment there was some signs but this is what triggered exactly what i wanted to do i said yeah. this is it i don't know if it was a wake-up call or it was the thing that hit you and that all this stuff process because right? i spent mm -hmm. six months uh, couldn't pick up my camera after. yes couldn't, so couldn't pick up my camera i started doubting what i'm doing you know and then something came up and shook me and said you have to keep on so is that when you decided to turn the camera in the other direction and this is where i decided to focus more and more on the people yeah. and do something about it it's really interesting how it's the things of our life that predict where we're going to go next and you don't know at the time right yeah. so you could never understand the meaning of her passing would yeah. change the life that you lead now because now you predominantly focus on the victims of war refugees and humans yeah i mean it's never enough that's what keeps hitting me all the time. I wish I could have done more. I wish I could do more. I wish I could do more. But again, did you see the movie Schindler's List? Yeah. He was the man that saved so many Jews. Oh yeah, from the yeah, yeah. Camps yeah. I like heard morning. about it. Even in the end, he just just one more, just one more. You know? Yeah. Always feeling like you can't. You never do enough, right? You know, this is my biggest fear, actually. That I, I never promise anybody anything. Mm. There are many stories where people ask me what these pictures are going to do for us. My answer is always clear. I'm not sure it's going to do anything, but there is one thing that I can promise you that the whole world will learn and hear about your story. Yeah. yeah. That's something I can deliver. However, when I came up with the foundation, and I'm happy today that the foundation is standing, I could actually help people. Yeah, yeah. And that started, it's like the light is coming. Maybe now it doesn't seem so dark because you're bringing some hope. And yeah, I started to feel, uh, I see a bath and it's a marathon. Yeah, well, maybe but an ultra marathon, right? <laughs> step by step. I mean, yeah. nothing comes easily, but you have to work hard to reach your goal. And my goal right now is to keep going. Yeah. As long when as did I you can. start the foundation? 2015. Yeah. I was in uh, the Greek island of Lesbos. And this is where uh, hundreds of thousands of people fled war, poverty, mm. discrimination. Uh, you know, took a dangerous journey on a dinghy from Turkey to Greece, mm. going to Europe and surf for a new safe home. I remember that year 
I heard Arabic in my ears. I heard languages that I'm familiar with. People going to, I've seen faces that I'm familiar with. I mean, mm. uh, it could have been me, could have been and your family. my family. Yeah, it doesn't discriminate, any, does it? Anybody. Mm. And this is where I said, okay, I signed to be the guy who informed the world of mm. what's happening around them. Or the guy who can bring simple kindness. You know, once in a while you do some kindness here and there. But I wanted to commit all of me to this cause, to help those in need, simply through passion, photography. And uh, again, it's never easy. I had to go to the Netherlands, uh, you know, get the papers right, get the yeah, blessing, yeah. open the foundation and start over again. And I'm proud to say that today we managed to help tens of thousands. Right, but I mean, you say we, I mean, it's because you know, with your wife, Ruth, I mean, you guys were a team. My, when did you guys meet? I met Rose in November 2012. Oh, before, so together you started. Yes. Because she's, I mean, she's the she's backbone the of the family. Nerve. She's the pillar. She's right. the I mean, soul. You're the, you're the front man, and she's always behind driving. And we're, we're actually a teamwork. Everything yeah. happens and, uh, you know, decision is made. Uh, in a way or another, she's the boss. You know, I'm the guy <laughs> who just take the pictures. I'm the guy. She's the one, right. Yeah, and I'm proud of that. But you know what? We're a team. Yeah. One hand doesn't clap, but we have also other people involved in the foundation, on the board, on the yeah. advisory board. We have young talents, we have people my age, we have... We're a team. When I say we're a team, it's not only me and Rose. We have left. You are one of the people no. who also supported us. So it's, it's being involved in such projects, you need support people, yeah you need yeah. people you need people to believe in what you do well what's crazy about it too is, is you wish more people would be involved because how good it can make you feel is i mean like you said it's frustrating and you never feel you do enough on the one hand but right. then there are other moments about it where there's nothing in life that makes you feel better you know uh, it is a marathon and yeah. as you said it's a double triple ultra marathon yeah. Yeah. ultra marathon. yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, you'll probably never feel like you've made enough progress. No, 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 it's never enough. Never ask a photographer if you're satisfied with your pictures. Yeah. You get somebody, are you satisfied? They say, never ask <laughs> it because you're never satisfied. I believe that there is always a situation where things could have been done better. Slightly better. Yeah. Better. Yeah. But yeah. What do you see as a path to doing more? Like, how do we, how do we do more? How do we bring this more to the world? We have to work harder. We have to work as humans in spreading more awareness into such important issues. We have to remind ourselves sometimes how lucky we are and show people more. I mean, recently I have, I, I mentor a photographer from the UK. She's a, it's a beautiful soul. Her name is Magda. She has a kid. And she came with the idea, she said, I'm gonna do a portrait series of children in a school in the UK and charge 20 pounds and donate every portrait to the foundation. And she mentioned it in the school, and the whole school are on board in the UK. And so now these kids feel some sense of empowerment that they're helping. Yes, they are involved. They are helping mm -hmm. the same age kids in different parts of the world. So for you to grow up in conflict, to grow up in war, it was so natural for you to go there. And then obviously now the recipients of war are helping them, right? And, you know, it's if we teach these children something good yeah. and give them something good so that when they get older, if we can teach them to help, like those children, they'll, the joy that they got from yeah. giving to these schools. Does that make sense? Yes, it reflects. So yeah. maybe when they come through at our age, they've got that inside them to want to help and want to do something. You know, we inspire each other. So we motivate each other. Mm. And we educate each other. I mean, I wasn't born fully aware of what's happening around me. Yeah. So we, 
but I'm always in search of ways to understand what's happening around me. Yeah. And that's maybe one of the reasons I, I love what I do as a photographer, but I get yeah. to inspire, motivate, and empower. Yeah, maybe find, maybe there's, we have to find ways to make this more interesting to people. You know, I, I read a book about charity one time, and I don't remember the author, but he's saying, you know, these corporations spend millions of dollars making toilet paper trendy, huh. but we but we feel so we don't want to promote charity work. We're always so nervous to promote it. We just you know it's. I mean, you think they they make millions of dollars to make toilet paper look cool. Yeah. How do we make? I mean, how can we make charity look cool or make it more? I don't know, accessible to people. Does that make sense? Yeah. One of the most interesting things that I heard in my life. Yeah. That a soccer field was built in a community, yeah. but the project doesn't have enough money to buy the ball. Yeah. I'm like, you spend millions to build this beautiful field, and you can't give them but there is no pennies left. So, and this is where I came. I said, I'm gonna buy them. So I managed to buy these balls, and I made a difference. And this was for me inspiring. Sometimes there are small details, small details. that can make big difference yeah this is where i started you know you, but we have to start somewhere yeah yeah somewhere yeah. you cycle around the world to help orphans mm, mm, thank you, you started somewhere yeah see? yeah and i'm sure you're inspiring a lot of people to follow your footsteps i hope so i don't know yeah. it's hard i yeah. mean i'm inspired by your work obviously it's mutual but what yeah. i mean is we're a human being at the end of the day we just need to remember where we all started yeah yeah so interesting so obviously back exposure so last year with your exhibition it was very much refugees but this year you're exhibition is different. Life so do you want to talk war. a little bit about Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm very happy actually every year this time of the year to be in Because you come to Sharjah. And, yeah. Yes, I mean, Sharjah became second home for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I visit Sharjah more than I visit my original home. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I meet friends, I meet photographers, I meet very interesting people. It's such an energizing week, isn't it? It's very yeah. inspiring week, but also it's very important for me because I get to raise voices yeah. this whole period. And this year we chose life and war. I went back to the root where it all started. Yeah. Conflict. And maybe this is the conflict within me, you know? But this picture is what led me to be the photographer and the person who I am today. So if you hadn't shot these images, this created you, the person? Yeah, definitely. You know, when I look at these images, I immediately go back in time. I go back to where it all started. Yeah. Each picture has its own story. Mm -hmm. But also, there's a lot of bad memories in these pictures that led to good ones. Yeah, yeah. Back, Tell me the moment how this came. Baghdad 2004. I was in Iraq covering the US led war. And just like any other day, we were driving and I saw black smoke. And back then, black smoke is a bad sign. This explosion just happened. I followed the trail. As you know, when people run away, you gotta run. We go the other direction. Yeah. So out of the blue, I saw people running. I walked towards where people are running from, and there was this man standing on top of this burning U.S. Army Humvee, chanting slogans, anti-U.S. slogans, with this metal bar. I grabbed the first picture. I took the second picture, and the viewer, the third frame, I saw an angry face up to jump behind me, I fled the scene. I was Do you think he would have killed you? I believe this could have been it. Mm -hmm. However, I mean, this picture was my first Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, but you had no idea when you took it, right? But, you know, but this picture is what keeps me asking questions up to date. I should have seek permission, but it's a war zone. If I stopped, I might have been dead. If I didn't take this picture, 
many people will not know because there was other pictures from Iraq that shows the world, but it was important for me to document what's happening. And and this is one of the picture that taught me after to you know to approach people, to talk to them, to understand, to seek permission, to have stuff. But back then things were different. I have other moments from Iraq. Just it was one of these scenes in Baghdad where uh, a U.S. soldier was injured and was evacuated by other soldiers on top of the Humvee. And these were the situation you don't want to get caught in the middle because you Is this the be, injured guy lying? Yes. Yeah. You could be shot, you could be run over, anything could happen. They don't care. They're just getting him to safety. 50. We don't care at this point. Yeah. And I was there. Again, I was young and experienced, but I I was a young man on a mission to document what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So the, everything in here really is the early memories from your career that brought you. Yeah. I mean, this was one of the bloodiest days of my life in Yemen. Two snipers took position on top of this rooftop and started shooting protesters on the, in the heads. I got lucky. And survived. Is that when you were shot? No, I was short. Oh. Because I'm shorter, everything in the head. So I managed to survive not being... Many people got killed. A colleague, a cameraman from Al Hurra TV was killed on that day in 2011. They're evacuating bodies. People, that have been shot from this guy. And there is that picture also from that period in Yemen during the revolution. So this is a very sad gallery, but this these pictures what made me realize the importance of what I do mm. and the power of photography to inform and then make a difference, make a change after. This was a very complicated period in my life. Yeah.